Uh, so Colin Quirk uh, from Reddit asks, um, have there been any attempts to quantify the benefits associated with personalizing training? For example, working with a coach or creating your own program versus following a more general program. Furthermore, is there a training age where this benefit kicks in? True novices probably don't need to personalize that much. Uh, at what point does this benefit, assuming it exists, start to kick in? Um, so yeah, basically just asking, is there, like, ha have we quantified the benefits associated with personalizing training? Um, and in terms of resistance training, not really. Um, so there, there was a really, really cool paper uh, published in Frontiers a couple years back, uh, the title of which is Effectiveness of an Individualized Training Based on Force Velocity Profiling During Jumping by Jimenez Reyes and colleagues. Um, that will be linked in the show notes. I would recommend checking that out. Very, um, what they did in that study essentially is the athletes, they, they would bring them in, do a force velocity profile, um, probably don't have time to explain how, how they would quantify whether someone was sh strong versus fast. But basically, there, there is a theoretically optimal uh, force velocity profile for jumping where, um, you know, if, if you are naturally very explosive, like if your, your angular velocities can be very, very fast, like with no load, but you're relatively weak, uh, if you kind of like pull that load velocity profile up there somewhere in the middle, that would roughly correspond with body weight. Uh, that will um, increase your your specific ability to create force and power for jumping versus someone who's already pretty strong, but then their their maximum contractile velocity is quite slow. If you kind of if if you're able to kind of pull that curve out, that would also um, increase power output there towards the middle of the curve where vertical jumping is occurring. So basically they, they profiled all of all of the subjects and uh, they had a group where they um, like trained whichever side of the curve people were bad at. So basically if someone was strong but slow, they would just do like very, very low weight over speed type stuff to try to improve maximum contractile velocity. And if someone was already uh, quite fast, but relatively weak, they would just have them train maximal strength to try to improve that functional capacity. Uh, and then they had another group of people as well who, who kind of trained all capacities just in general. So they would do um, what's called like optimal load training, where essentially you would train with the sorts of power and force outputs that would be associated with, with what you're trying to improve. So in this case, vertical jump, and then also some strength work, also some speed work. So just kind of like a generalized vertical jumping program. And so in that study where they did tailor the training intervention for all of the individuals, um, the, the group of people on the individualized program did have much better vertical jumping outcomes than just kind of the more generalized program did. So, you know, I, I kind of view that as a proof of concept. Uh, you know, a maximum squat is not a maximum vertical jump, but it is kind of a proof of concept that if you um, adequately quantify what people are lacking in and develop an indiv in individualized training intervention to, um, you know, target those things where people could improve, then you might have have better outcomes. But like I said, that's not that's not specifically like trying to improve maximal strength. Um, one other thing just to generally note is that oftentimes, like this this question asked about working with a coach to create an individualized program for you. One thing to note is that just merely having a coach, uh, regardless of the quality of their programming, might still improve your results. Uh, so there have been a handful of studies that have looked at supervised versus unsupervised training or uh, supervised training with a high ratio of lifters to trainers versus a low ratio of lifters to trainers. Um, and, and those studies will be linked in the show notes as well. But uh, what these studies find is essentially they, they will have two groups of people. They put them on the same training program. And one of the groups has basically research assistants working with them the whole time. So, you know, loading the bar for them, spotting them, giving them encouragement, whatever. 
Uh, and then the other group of people, there is still a research assistant sitting in the room. Um, and like, you can ask them questions like, hey, I, I think I'm supposed to go up and wait on this. Like, should I? Or like, hey, how did my form look? But they're not like actively monitoring and coaching you through the entire workout. Um, but it's the same training program regardless. And in the supervised versus unsupervised groups, uh, the, the people with more e either supervision or more direct supervision or kind of more one-on-one uh, -on -one, hands-on type supervision, even on the same training program, those people tend to uh, build more strength. So, you know, <laughs> regardless of the individualized program, just simply having a coach and someone that you're accountable to, especially if it's someone you can work with in person, that in and of itself might improve your results. Um, and one other thing to note as well is, even though there haven't been all that many studies in resistance training that have specifically looked at individualizing training in the way we would probably think of it, so you know, doing uh, a big intake questionnaire to try to tailor every programming variable to someone's uh, unique needs and specifications, there are a lot of studies that use uh, a research paradigm called a within subject unilateral design, where basically if there are two training interventions, instead of recruiting subjects and splitting them into two groups, what you do is just recruit one group of subjects and uh, like split their sides of their body into different training programs. So like, you know, you might have one leg doing high intensity training and the other leg doing high volume training. Um, and, and essentially you look to see if like within individual, um, you know, someone's leg responds much better to one style of programming versus another, uh, or just like one mix of training variables versus another. And in those studies, what you tend to see is that people who respond well to training just respond well to training, period. And people who don't respond well to training don't respond well to training, period. Like the, the within subject correlation between training responses, leg to leg or arm to arm, tend to be quite high, where if if you respond well to one program, you'll probably respond well to the other program as well. Uh, there was one particular within subject unilateral design study uh, that's not coming to mind right now, but the details of it come to mind. Um, so it was looking at manipulating frequency and volume, where if memory serves, there were three conditions. There was a twice per week training, three times per week training, and five times per week training, if memory serves. Um, and essentially, the, the workout days were the same regardless. So, you know, it, it was just like the three sets of quad work every time you train. Um, and so, you know, the uh, like, like training five times per week, not only was frequency higher, but total volume was higher as well, because the per session volume was the same regardless. And so that was that study also used a within subject unilateral design. And that's the only paper coming to mind where there really were pretty big uh, within individual differences where some of the people did respond quite a bit better to the lower volume and frequency. And some people did respond quite a bit better to the higher volume and frequency where like, you know, if you had one 2x leg and one 5x leg, uh, on average, there were larger gains in the 5x legs than the 2x legs. But there were quite a few individuals where the 2x leg or the 3x leg did have quite a bit larger gains than the 5x leg. Sugge and that suggests to me like, because there have been all sorts of interventions that have used um, that sort of experimental design. And, and that's the only study coming to mind that used that type of intervention where there were pretty large within subject differences between sides of their body, which suggests to me that more than anything else, the factor that needs to be individualized is just total training volume and, and kind of like the optimal level of volume uh, for hypertrophy and strength outcomes probably does vary quite a bit between individuals. So, you know, if you're looking for, you know, hey, I, I do want to individualize my training, what variable should I look at that will likely give me the most bang for my buck? Um, I think a, a combination of volume and frequency probably are the things that need to be individualized the most. Um, and other factors, you know, might make a small difference, but but probably aren't going to make just a night and day difference in terms of results. So yeah, that wasn't a very direct and succinct answer to that question. Long story short, there's, there's not that much research on, 
specifically on just kind of the generalized concept of individualizing resistance training versus putting everyone on the same program, largely just because that would be a difficult uh, study to design and for it to pass peer review. Like, you know, if if you're, say, trying to customize four different variables, you got frequency, intensity, volume, and exercise selection or something like that, and you have a big screening questionnaire where you know, you try to to optimize all four of those variables for a group of 20 people versus another group of 20 people who are all just put on the same training program, you would probably wind up with, on average, different enough training interventions in those two groups that reviewers would, would look at the paper and be like, well, you know, what what are you actually studying here? Like, maybe the concept of in individualization, but what if the individualized group just wound up training with way higher training volumes. Like, could you really say that individualization was the driver here versus just whatever other training variables wound up differing between the groups? So, you know, it, I would be interested in reading that study, but I, um, <laughs> I would not, uh, I would not want to be the person <laughs> designing and conducting that study. So yeah, direct research, pretty lacking. Um, but like I said, with the, with the vertical jump study, there is just kind of like conceptual evidence in favor of individualization. I do think that a lot of the benefits from working with a coach might come from the program itself, but I think a lot of them just come from working with a coach and there are inherent benefits to doing that. Um, and if you're interested in kind of indirect evidence related to individualizing training variables and the sorts of magnitudes of difference you, you could expect from tweaking a variable here or there, just keep an eye out for uh, for studies that employ a within subject unilateral design, because that that's sort of the research approach that gives us the best evidence for the for the types of differences you could expect within subject from from tweaking a variable here or there.